Good evening and welcome to 60 Minutes. I'm Amelia Adams. The polls had been strongly predicting it, so last night there were few surprises when the voice referendum was defeated. For supporters of constitutional recognition for Indigenous Australians, it's an enormous disappointment. After all, the proposition had seemed so simple and sensible, but they just couldn't convince voters to write yes on the ballot paper. What's important now is understanding where to from here, because the fact remains, many First Nations people deserve much better lives than they have now. And of course, a once in a generation decision, and Australians delivered a resounding no. When you do the hard things, when you aim high, sometimes you fall short. And tonight, we acknowledge, understand and respect that we have. For Anthony Albanese, it is a humiliating conclusion to an election night pledge. And together, we can embrace the Uluru Statement from the Heart. We can answer its patient, gracious call for a voice enshrined in our constitution. Perhaps caught up in the emotion of the moment, the new Prime Minister made a promise he simply couldn't keep. What I could promise was that we would go all in, that we would try, and we have. It sounded like a no-brainer, recognising Indigenous people in the Constitution and hearing their advice on issues that affect them. But the Yes campaign plummeted from the outset as the Prime Minister failed to clearly explain how it would work. The Coalition opposed the voice and it became a political slanging match. It is an absolute unknown entity. We don't know um, what its functions are, how it'll operate, how people will be appointed or elected. I know the last few months have been tough, but be proud of who you are. Be proud of your identity. While it might feel like there can be no winners, for the architect of the no vote, opposition leader Peter Dutton, it's an awkward political victory. How did you feel when you woke up this morning? Well, I feel a sense of relief for, for the country because I think we would have changed as a country and not for the better. Most importantly, I don't think we would have got the practical outcomes for Indigenous Australians that, that we all want. Your campaign is being labelled today as disgusting and shameful. How does that sit with you? Well, I, I just ask people to be respectful of a democratic process. Uh, this wasn't a 50 149 outcome, one in two Labor voters who have voted no. Uh, they haven't been influenced by the campaign uh, that I've run. They've been influenced by the fact that the detail just wasn't there. Well, they, they certainly were influenced by your campaign. This concept of a voice to parliament was pretty straightforward and it, it's been killed by politics. Well, Amelia, it wasn't a simple prop proposition or Australians would have voted for it. The fact is that the Prime Minister acted against advice. He was warned not to take the country down a divisive path and he made a deliberate decision to keep the design of the voice from the Australian people. OK, but with respect, I think Australians are baffled by the fact that two accomplished politicians, an opposition leader and a PM, couldn't thrash out something to put to the public together and get some good outcomes. Well, Amelia, I think, the, I think the public has spoken its mind and delivered its verdict on the Prime Minister's model and his leadership on The Voice. I think this is, this is very significant. Uh, there wasn't any compromise. There was no suggestion by the Prime from Minister. From his side or no, from your side? Absolutely not from his side. We offered, uh, turn the question into one of recognition. I met with Anthony Albanese half a dozen times, but, but, but most of them, if I'm being honest, uh, well, when the Prime Minister was on his way into a press conference. So it was a courtesy. And I think he wanted the opportunity to say, I've spoken with or I've consulted with Peter Dutton. But it was cursory and it was uh, a pleasantry, if you like. Uh, but there was no substantive discussion about uh, what changes could be made because the Prime Minister wasn't of that mind. 
Couldn't you also have budged and compromised more? Well, again, we did. Uh, what we said was, we'll meet you halfway. And halfway is recognition of Indigenous Australians in our constitution, supported, I think, by 80% of Australians. But for his own reasons, for his own motivations, for his own self-interest, the Prime Minister thought that he could have his red fern moment. And I don't think that's the leadership that Australians want in their Prime Minister. When it's all about them, it should be about our country, about Indigenous Australians, about a moment of unification. And he squandered that opportunity. You want to lead this country. How do you think this result impacts our international reputation, how we be viewed around the world? Well, I, I, I think the Prime Minister's overplayed that card. Uh, and I think the large majority of our friends will say, well, that was a democracy. Uh, it was a democratic process in action. And we respect the fact, as we would a vote in New Zealand or the United States or Canada, and I think they would be accepting of that outcome. Well, the fact remains we're the only Commonwealth nation who doesn't officially recognise its Indigenous people. Isn't this idea that Australia is racist and discriminatory, it's exactly the type of disinformation that China has been spreading online. I mean, you're a China hawk. Isn't this result a gift to the CCP? Well, we shouldn't allow it to be. And the Prime Minister was the one that introduced that language. And I think it's, again, not in our national interest. OK, so where to from here? How do we address the disparity in life expectancy, healthcare, incarceration rates, given that our parliament is not willing to hear from Indigenous Australians on issues that affect them? Well, I just don't think that's the case. I, mean, I think the narrative around an Aboriginal voice not being heard, it, it, it's just not the reality. The fact remains we've spent close to half a billion dollars on an this outrage, referendum. A complete outrage. And today, nothing changes for Indigenous Australians. Is there anything positive that Indigenous people, in fact, all Australians, can take away from this? Uh, of course, of course there is. We live in the greatest country in the world. We should celebrate the success that we've got within Indigenous communities now. And there are very significant disparities of as course, well. Of course, of course. And had we enshrined the voice, I think we would have put at risk some of the success. And that's the judgment that the Australian public has made. So we have to listen to their verdict in a democratic process. And I think if we can do that, there is opportunity and there is a bright future. Uh, forget the Canberra bureaucrats, forget those who are living off uh, Indigenous disadvantage and listen to those people who are in practical need. If we do that, we'll do a great service for our country and we'll improve the future for the next generation of Indigenous Australians. All right. Mr Dutton, thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure. Thanks, Amelia. Thank you. We asked Prime Minister Anthony Albanese for an interview, but he said no. It's a disappointing response from our leader, considering the importance of the issue. Hello, I'm Amelia Adams. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for our brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.